ti. Hello everybody, welcome. I am in the process of joining together a couple of pieces to make up a whole pot. And that's one way you can make a bigger pot is by uh, throwing two sections and then joining them together. You can throw it all in one if you have the skill to be able to do that. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I thought I'd just try to um, make a, a larger piece, a couple of larger pots, and to get my hand in, as it were, and practice that. And, um, and of course you can throw these bigger and make taller pots. So, I'm just going to bring you in on that. Maybe for some of you out there, you know, it's a challenge, isn't it, to make a pot that's a little bit bigger. And, um, but let's not think that big pots are better, because they're not necessarily. But sometimes you need, you know, in your, in your, uh, <clears throat> let's say in your gallery or in your showroom or in your shop you need, need to have a bit of variation in scale you don't want everything just to be small neither do you want everything to be big but it's nice to have some pots that are, are slightly bigger and some medium size and some small at least that's what I think so I made these sections actually a, cu a couple of days ago and um oh Shino, come here come on here the pottery cat <laughs> hello <laughs> Shino says hello don't you okay off you go so um i threw the two sections and they were three pounds of clay, these. Okay. And uh, I thought, you know, I mean, I'd thrown them bigger than that, of course. But I thought, well, as I haven't done it for a long time, I'll just, I'll start off with a couple of three pound sections and see how I go. So obviously the important thing when you do this is to measure with the calipers the, um, the width so that they are the same. So, I've done that, and I think they were about the same. Just do the best you can to get them the same. Also, pay a little bit of attention to the, to the flatness of the, um, the, the top here. Now obviously you don't want a, a top that is uneven and going up and down, you want it flat. So not only do you want it, or level, I should say, but you also want it a flat. So, there are different ways of doing this. And um, my father, I used to watch him do it, and uh, so I learned from him, but probably maybe you have a different method. Anyway, what I do is I take my needle tool now, and I'm going to just score the top here. like that. I'm also going to take this, put him on there, and I'm going to do the same, score score the top here. Like that. Then I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to put a little water there into the scored marks okay and we're going to do the same here just dribble some water not so much that it all overflows down the side that's not what we want 
you just want to put it there like that. I probably actually should have done that. Usually I do that and leave it for 10 minutes and I haven't done it because I didn't think ahead enough. <laughs> Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Okay. Now these are a little bit of a challenge if you've never done one of these before. Um, but actually if you if you just try to just be careful, measure, just throw a decent a decent cylinder slightly slightly wider at the top than the base, at the bottom. And um, Okay, I'm going to, we haven't got time to hang around waiting for this. So I'm just going to hope that that's going to be okay. Okay, now this one, okay, which is the top, I, I, threw, I threw on a bat as well. I threw the base on a bat as well, but I've taken the base off the bat. But the top I've left on the bat and I haven't cut it. That enables me to turn it upside down, okay? So I can now turn it upside down, holding the bat, you see, to locate the top half on top of the bottom half. Now, this is where I see how well, <laughs> how well I measured. So I don't have to actually have to touch the pot at this stage. I can maneuver the, the top half just by simply Okay, now I'm just, at this stage, as you can see, I'm pressing on the center here, pushing that down. Now you'll see that that's fairly well, pretty much the same diameter. If, it, if one is very slightly more than the other, don't worry, okay? Because we haven't finished with it yet, have we? Okay, so we stuck one up on top of the other. So what we're going to do now is take our cutoff wire and we're going to put it up to our chest like that. And we're going to take the wire and pull through. Take the bat off, you see. <clears throat> now I don't know whether you can notice, but there is a hole at the top there. Because when I threw, when I threw the top section, when I threw the top section, or what was going to be the top section, I made provision and put a hole there, because that's going to let my finger go in, you see. All right. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to, I'm just going to rub over this join like this. Now I didn't tell you, but I told you I threw the bot the two halves and I threw them each on a bat. But the bottom half I took off the bat and I placed it. I placed it on a plaster bat. And the reason for doing that is so that the bottom half of the pot, okay, sat on here 
the plaster will absorb some of the moisture out of the wall of the pot so that it's not too soft in the bottom section here because the bottom section here is going to carry all the weight of everything above it, isn't it? So you don't want this to be soft in the wall. So put it on a plaster but, and it'll, it'll stiffen off a bit, you see? High technology. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've got to make sure we've got a, a, a join here that is... And you saw what, I, what I've just done. And now I'm using my, my rib just to smooth it over. Now what I've got to do now is I've got to break in here with my finger. Now the, the clay at the top of the pot here is still softish, you see. Now it's important that you do this slowly, open it out. Because whereas the, the bottom of the pot may be centre on the wheel head, the top of the pot could be moving, you see. It's a bit like the top of a tree swaying in the wind. So the action of me pulling out here, opening this, could unseat it from below here. All right? So you just got to do this a bit a bit gingerly you know a bit carefully here because what what we actually want to do is open this out enough so that I can put my hand in because I've got to get down on the inside where that join was and join it there as well believe it or not <laughs> So I'm trying to keep, as I'm opening it out, I'm also trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep the top running, running on centre, you see. Now you will find that the clay, because you've left it a day or two to stiffen off, that the clay, you know, is not soft like when you threw it. So it will have a tendency perhaps to um, waver up and down, you know. As much as we want everything to be absolutely on centre, the truth is, well, this is a handmade pot and um, there is a little bit of variance, you know. Things are not as perfect as we as we want them to be, maybe. Now you see I can almost get my hand in there now. Having said that, we're not looking for that kind of perfection, are we, in this kind of pot. In a piece of pottery that's handmade like this, we're not looking for it to look like it's been machined. Compressing the rim a bit here, trying to get some some order in my chaos. <laughs> now, as I'm working the pot here, putting fresh water on it, as you see me doing, the action of doing all this is softening all of this, you see. Because out of the top here, out of the top here, I've got to form a neck. All right, so I'm going to dry my hand a touch. Because I've got to get down on the inside, you see. I'm going to get down now on the inside here. And find, find the place where the join is, which I can feel. 
and with my hand on the outside I'm, I'm pushing and working that clay by pushing outwards against my hand on, which is on the outside of the pot you see and as I slowly rotate slowly rotating as, as I do it sort of doing as it were like a clay weld welding in clay you know I'm smoothing over Now sometimes if you're doing a number of these pots, you'll maybe throw half a dozen sections, bottom sections, and half a dozen top sections. And what you will do is you will work on them in turn, one and then the other. And you will do, make, do them up to a certain point, maybe join them together and then put them to one side, let them set up a bit, okay, then come back to them later and work them again. Sometimes it's good, you know, to do that with pots. You, you do so much, but then it's good to let the clay unstress itself. Let it sit there. Let it maybe just um, stiffen up a bit. So I'm working my way. moving the, the wheel around bit by bit with my foot on the actual treadle here. I'm just manipulating the treadle, the wheel itself directly with my foot. I'm not using the treadle. I'm just this kind of wheel I think is very nice for doing this because I don't really want this to suddenly touch the pedal and the thing to start going too fast. You see, I, I want it to be under under my under my complete control and that's why this this kind of wheel is is good for this all right okay so I've joined it on the outside and I've joined it on the inside. We have op we've opened up the neck here. So the water with my hands here, here on the top, is making the clay more malleable, more soft, more, more. I'm going to do what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to I'm going to work it like this now and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a plastic bag over it and I'm going to leave it and we'll come back and and do some more to this a little bit later after the you know, if you take a pot and you spray it with water and you put a plastic bag over it, spray, spray the inside of the bag as well, put a plastic bag over it and, le and leave it for a couple of hours, it helps, it does something to the pot. You know, the water, the moisture, it kind of equalizes out a little bit of the, um, the humidity level in the clay, in the wall of the pot, etc. And um, that's that's a it's not a bad. I quite often do that with pots. I I um, I work them so far, and then I 
and then we'll put a plastic bag, you know, like a supermarket bag over the pot and just leave it there and leave it sometimes overnight or come back to it the next day or come back to it in the afternoon. And um, well, so far that's looking reasonably good. It's running, it's running fairly true at the top here. And so what I'm going to do is look for a plastic bag. Here's a plastic bag. You see, and what we're going to do is just put that over there like that and just let it just let it set up there now for a little while go and have some lunch I think it's probably the order of the day and um, come back to that after lunch you see Okay, folks, well, thanks for joining me. Together, we're making progress as we practice. <laughs> Take care, and I'll see you later.